Hi everyone, in this video we're going to introduce the central limit theorem and do an example. So first, a few remarks. So the first remark is that if x is normal, so if x is a normal random variable, so one way to think about this um, is you could think of x as being a number, a random number from a population. And if you were to graph all the numbers from this population, uh, you would have a histogram that would look roughly bell-shaped. So you can think of this as saying, if you have a, a bunch of data that comes from a histogram that's bell-shaped, then so is x-bar. So what is x-bar? Well, from the past, uh, x-bar is the sample mean. So you can think of this as follows. Um, if you have a bunch of data that comes from a bell-shaped distribution, then you take all the possible averages of a specific size from this population and also make a histogram, it's also bell-shaped. So if the data is bell-shaped, then so are the averages. In other words, if the data is normal, then so are the averages. That's what this is saying. So if your data is normal, then the averages of your data are also normal. The shorthand way of saying this is if x is normal, then so is x-bar. It's a lot in that one little statement. Two, because we're thinking of x-bar as being a random variable, it has a mean and it has a standard deviation. So the standard deviation of x-bar is sigma over the square root of n. Okay, that's the standard deviation of x-bar. Here sigma is the standard deviation of x. It's given in the problems. And then little n is your sample size. So very important uh, formula. Three, uh, whenever you're doing a question, a homework question or a probability question, so whenever you are doing a probability question, so whenever you are asked about a probability, regarding x-bar. So if the question says something like, what's the probability that the average um, height of 50 women is greater than 6 feet? You first have to compute sigma over the square root of n. This is going to be your new standard deviation. New standard deviation. All right, so now we can talk about the central limit theorem. What the central limit theorem basically says is that if your sample size is big, then x-bar is approximately normal. So how big does it have to be? Um, well, bigger than 30. So if n is bigger than 30, x-bar is approximately normal. The formal statement of the central limit, the central limit theorem says that as your sample size approaches infinity, then the probability distribution of x-bar also approaches a normal distribution. Uh, for our purposes, though, as long as it's bigger than 30, we're good. So in all of the probability questions you'll see, one of two things will happen. Either the population is normal, in which case the averages are normal, right? That's from the first remark here. If x is normal, so are the averages. Or the sample size will be bigger than 30, in which case x-bar is approximately normal. What that equates to is it lets us use StatCrunch to answer all of the questions that we'll be doing. So let's go ahead and actually do a simple problem. That was a lot of information in like four minutes. Let's say we have 40 women that are randomly selected from the world. And we know that um, mu is 64 inches. So the average height of these women is 64 inches. And the standard deviation of all of the heights of all of the women in the world is 2 inches. Okay, And we want the probability that the average height of 40 women 
is greater than 65 inches. So classic, classic uh, central limit theorem problem. Okay, so <clears throat> solution. So the question says probability, so you would write uh, the big P, so P. Then here's the key, probability that the average height, so it's talking about the average height of these 40 women. So that's the sample mean. So the notation is x bar. Okay. This is greater than 65 inches. So because we have this, because we have this, remember whenever you're asked a probability a question, a probability question regarding x bar, which is this this case here, you first compute the new standard deviation. This is so important. Sigma over square root of n. Okay. So in this case, sigma is 2, and then n is 40, because n is the sample size. Okay, so then you put this in your calculator, which I should have here. I do. Let me see if it's on. There it is. Good stuff. So 2 divided by the square root of 40. So 0 0.316. Now, how many decimals you use here will affect things. So keep that in mind. Um, use as many as you want. I'll be bold and just use 3. So that's our new standard deviation, right? This is our new, let me write that down. This is our standard deviation. This is our new standard deviation. And the reason we did this is because we were asked a question about X bar, right? That's the reason we did this, okay? So then we go to stat, calculators, normal. Whoops. Stat, calculators, normal. Left click. And then your mean here is 64. That's your mu. Your standard deviation. It's not 2. I almost messed up. That would defeat the whole point of the problem. Uh, the new standard deviation is 0 0.316. Good stuff. Changes to greater than. Enter the 65. And that's it. We should be good, right? So you'll notice that uh, there is no greater than sign. It doesn't matter for the normal distribution. Greater than is the same as greater than or equal to. So click compute. So you get 0 0.0007766. So 0 0.0007766. Okay. So very, very unlikely. So if you're asked a probability question and you see x bar in the problem or it says probability that the average height, probability that the mean height, before you go to StatCrunch, you first have to compute this, this standard deviation. And this is the standard deviation that has to go in StatCrunch. Because StatCrunch wants the standard deviation of your variable. Your variable here is x bar. It's the sample mean. So it's important to have that in StatCrunch. If it said one woman, then you, then you, would, use, then you would use the two. That's it.